It's been four years since Pokemon Platinum was released back in the golden ages of 2009 which became the last good Pokemon game in the main series, if we exclude Heart Gold and Soul Silver that is. Anything that goes beyond Generation 4 of Pokemon games is more stale than rotten fingernails, but that's another story. By the time Pokemon Platinum came out on the Nintendo DS, it had already sold far over 100 million units, and just as with Generation 1, 2 and 3, a third version to summarise the two versions was released. Pokemon Yellow was a tweaked version of Red and Blue to play like the Anime, whereas Crystal and Emerald barely added anything new from their prequels, except Emerald had a jaw-droppingly awesome battle frontier that created a satisfactory compact game that offered hundreds of hours of content, and that was exactly the same with Pokemon Platinum. Two games I just cannot decide which version is better, Pokemon Platinum or Emerald, now there is a really good comparison. Now most people would just jump to saying Emerald, but I've actually got reasons in this entire review why Pokemon Platinum is one of the best Pokemon games there is, and why Pokemon Platinum is much better than that dick tingling black and white 2. Pokemon Platinum however took Diamond and Pearl fixing all their flaws and adding effect and atmosphere to those games, so let's talk about how Pokemon Platinum perfected Diamond and Pearl and gave rewarding and pleasurable additions and experiences with content that made these games feel very complete. Pokemon Platinum not only added new characters such as Looker and that old molestering old man I can't remember the name of, but it added snowy and brilliant weather themes, a distortion world with weird illusions, puzzles and a creepy gripping storyline and atmosphere, with a big GTS station replacing the previous one floor hub with better quality trading and loads of awesome communication features over Wi-Fi. Even added a Wi-Fi player where you could battle and play mini games to win prizes, a more detailed after game with a stark mountain quest. And best of all, the Battle Frontier, offering more BP points and big areas compared to Diamond and Pearl, all offering different battle styles. So there were massive improvements in comparison between Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, with a much bigger and more diverse Battle Frontier with more things to do. You had the Battle Hall, the Battle Tower, the Battle Arcade, the Battle Castle, and the best of all, the Battle Factory. Pokemon Platinum's encouragement of its broad range of methods of obtaining all the Pokemon and completing the Pokedex has never been so satisfying, rewarding, and exciting. The game provided a power park to catch all the Pokemon from previous GBA cartridges. Hell, you could even use the GBA cartridge in the DS slot to catch foreign Pokemon, such as Ursaring and Sableye. You could use the Poker Radar to go on method missions and detect outbreaks from foreign Pokemon. You could spray honey onto trees to obtain Pokemon, such as Munchlax, and the game provided a Pokemon Mansion, which became incredibly useful in after the game, as you could even catch Pokemon from the Kanto and Johto regions. The game even offered downloadable Wi-Fi cards to catch event-only Pokemon. You even had to complete the legendary Pokemon Emerald if you were to get every Pokemon, such as Regirock and Rayquaza. You even needed to trade with your friends to evolve Pokemon or obtain new items. The amount of diverse methods by obtaining Pokemon and Pokemon Platinum is incredible, and because of this, it feels like a true Pokemon game, unlike Black and White 2 with these cheesy bad innovations and terrible story. In my mind, Black and White 2 are breadcrumbs compared to Pokemon Platinum. Moreover, the story in Pokemon Platinum is legendary and stunning. The music is incredible, it's beautifully written, it's atmospheric, and it adds the taste of the game. The towns, the forests, the mansions, the roots, the caves, the distortion world. New areas, new moon islands, Stark Mountain, the underground, and the lakes. Oh, the music. The music in this game is so fucking amazing that it makes me hate Generation 5. Why? Why does innovation have to ruin it all? Why? But that's another story. But this game is legendary and its music makes me rest my case. The story is set in Snowy Sinnoh, and it starts with the traditional Pokemon cliches at the beginning, with a starting town, a nutty professor, and a choice of one of three starter Pokemon. I first meet Cyrus, a mentally deranged, disturbed, blue-headed guy, right at the start of the game in one of the lakes, and also in the mountain caves, unlike in Diamond and Pearl, where you just meet him praying at a statue to Jesus Grandma. 
I mean, Jesus Grandma. As I was saying, Jesus Grandma. God, shut the fuck up. Thank you. So later on in the game, you'll discover Cyrus, who has an incredibly disturbed persona. Not only that, but he's the leader of Team Galactic, a troublesome gang who has horrible evil desires to create a new world where no happiness lies, but depression and unrational thoughts. I don't like Team Galactic as much as Team Aqua and Magma, but their evil contentions feel more realistic and achievable to create a new world, so throughout the game you're going to come across the Team Galactic goons, try to stop their evil plans and defeat 8 gym leaders along the way. The gyms are incredibly enjoyable, the music the trainers make when they catch you is very catchy, just listen to that hiker music! In between gyms you'll either be going through routes, Team Galactic's hideouts or Sinnoh's brilliant mountain range. With loads of caves and lakes, one of the hardest Pokemon to catch is a Feeble as it can only be found in four possible fishing spots in the foggy part of Meaty Spear at night time. One of the hardest Pokemon to obtain in Sinnoh is Munchlax, as the only possible way is to spray honey on a tree, in the 1 in 36 chance it's a Munchlax. Believe it or not, that's incredibly low, and the amount of Kumbis I got was enough to make a bloody army. Well you know what, fuck that, just go on GTS and trade for the bloody thing. It doesn't even take a numpty obligistic to figure that one out. Hella numpty ologist. Basically, Team Galactic captivates a man and his daughter to obtain the data of the red chain in Florona Town. Now, I didn't pay much attention to the sections of the story like these, but you have to clear Team Galactic out of the town, and you meet some dodgy drug dealer, I mean, honey dealer who spends his widow life selling jars of honey and you have to head to the second gym after bumping into Detective Looker. You'll then go for a turn of forest which is where the atmosphere really kicks in. The music is chilled and atmospheric and adds a sense of mystery. Just listen to that music! And the best part is that it's dark and soothing light. Near the end of the forest you'll find what looks like an empty abandoned mansion. And while it's very creepy and filled with ghosts and ghastlies, item and the like, there's two Pokemon you can catch once you've met special conditions. If you insert any Pokemon Fire Red or Leaf Green cartridge into the GBA slot while playing the game, press A in front of a picture frame with the Pokemon's eyes on, in one of the mansion's bedrooms, and a wild Gengar will come out and attack you. While this is a great method of obtaining Gengar, the mansion only serves for one main purpose. That's right, Rotten. So if you approach the mansion at night, you'll encounter Rotom. Rotom basically attacks you when you talk to the TV. Rotom is an incredibly useful Pokemon as the Rotom Key Wi-Fi event launched. That's right, an event only item that allows you to destroy a wall in Eterna City's space zone, revealing a room of mechanisms that changes Rotom's form, some of which are washing machines and toasters. If you get 5 Rotoms, you can have a group of Rotoms of all different forms, probably the best form being the washing machine or the toaster. Eterna City is one of my favourite towns in all of video games. The music is very western, the city has a bicycle shop, a space zone, Professor Oak's house, a diagonal statue and a gym. The underground kit is amazing and it lets you explore the underground of Sinnoh, where you can find fossils, gems and jewels, which can be used to buy furniture off of hikers for a base. That's right, you have a base in this game and you can invite your friends over to come join and you can also revive fossils. That's right, you can revive fossils in this game and you can also obtain new Pokemon for completing the National Pokenex. I once invited Alex into my underground lair and he trashed my base completely, blocking my door up with a Pokemon, trying to buy himself some time for me to get past it and stole all my items, jewels and fossils out of my PC, either disconnecting with them or selling them to some silly hiker looking for some sandpaper to dick scrub on. Now there is a Pokemon lottery in Jubilife City in the TV station with a big jackpot being a master ball. But the chances of you winning are so slim, you might as well go screw this, buy an action replay only to get struck by lightning twice and also have two husbands die flat faced in their own bakery dough. It's like putting a pair of underpants on your head and claiming you to be the king of Saxon Scandinavia. Wait, what sort of comparison is that? People are now going to kill me for going off on a tangent, 
Well, I can do what I like. It's a free country, you know! Some of my other favourite areas in the game is the Safari Marsh and Route 221. And I don't know why, but the number 221 always makes me go giddy at the room numbers of six form rooms on the second floor of a school building. The Marsh's music is very fitting, very jazzy and relaxing and atmospheric. While the Marsh is rather tedious, it gives you the chance and fun of chucking dirt at Pokemon and bullying them for their dirty marshy cultures. How discriminatory is that, eh? The music in Pokemon Platinum is very dreamy, exciting, and the amount of jazzy organs and pianos used really forms a nostalgic feel of the game. And that's why I don't like Pokemon Black and White 2. They just lack the flavour of Generation 3 and Generation 4. I've now pretty much summed up that this game is incredibly rewarding, and the challenge of collecting all 493 Pokemon is incredibly fun and very rewarding because there's so many methods of catching Pokemon that you'll never ever get bored. The gameplay feels complete both pre-post and post-game, and anyone who thinks Pokemon Black and White are better than these games have clearly not played the rewarding aspects of Platinum and also lack understanding of the game's atmosphere. Well that's the end of my review, so hopefully if you haven't played Pokemon Platinum you really are missing out because it's one of the best Pokemon games there is, if not the best, and in my opinion is either Pokemon Platinum or Pokemon Emerald in the main series of Pokemon games, whereas the others are all boring and tedious. So thanks for um, watching my review, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.